This is Christopher John Bjorkness. It is March 30th, 2023. You won't hear much about it in Western media, but there is a war brewing between the nation of Azerbaijan and Iran. Iran has a host of grievances against Azerbaijan, and Azerbaijan wants to ignite a conflict with Iran at the behest of Israel. Benjamin Netanyahu has been pushing for war with Iran for several decades, and Israel has positioned itself to have a staging grounds for launching aerial attacks on Iran from air bases it has established in Azerbaijan. This, of course, presents a national security risk to the Iranians, and they want uh, this war with Azerbaijan so that they can chase Israel off of what they view as their historical territories. If we look, we can see that uh, Israel has been supplying billions upon billions of dollars in arms to Azerbaijan. These arms are have primarily been used to ethnically cleanse Armenians from the region of Nagorno-Karabakh, which is located within the boundaries of Azerbaijan. Uh, the book Just Memories states, Israeli involvement in Nagorno-Karabakh can be assessed in two discrete dimensions. Firstly, Israel was the only state to conduct arms trading with Azerbaijan. From 2012 until 2015, an estimated U.S. $4 billion in arms were sold to the Azeris. The reason that other nations weren't selling arms to the Azeris is because they knew those arms would be used to ethnically cleanse Armenians from the Nagorno-Karabakh region and to initiate probably a broader war between um, Azerbaijan and Armenia and the international community wanted to head that off and prevent it, but the Israelis have an ancient hatred of Armenians and were very willing to sell arms to the Azeris so that they could use those arms to commit genocide against the Armenian people. The uh, Iranians know that Israel wants to also commit genocide against Iranians, so they uh, have a strong interest in uh, preventing Israel from establishing military bases in Azerbaijan. Israel receives 40% of its oil from Azerbaijan, and um, the U.S. is now complaining that uh, Azerbaijan is ethnically cleansing Armenians and has blockaded the Lachin Corridor by which the nation of Armenia supplies the people of Nagorno-Karabakh with their essential needs. The U.S. is not sanctioning Azerbaijan despite international calls for the U.S. to do so because, and despite the fact that the U.S. has a national security interest and a humanitarian interest in ending this Azeri aggression against the Armenian people. And the reason that the U.S. is not instituting those sanctions is because Azerbaijan supplies uh, Israel with 40% of its national oil consumption annually. It is also because the U.S. at the behest of Israel uh, wants to suppress Iran and pose a threat to Iran through those bases in Azerbaijan that Israel maintains. Uh, Haaretz, an Israeli news organization, reported back in 2012, um, Azerbaijan granted Israel access to air bases on Iran border. This is obviously a national security threat to Iran. Foreign policy quotes U.S. diplomats as saying that Israel is deeply embedded in Azerbaijan and says intelligence officials worried that Israel's military involvement 
in Azerbaijan would complicate efforts to reduce Israeli-Iranian tensions. Now this is from March 6th, 2023, so it's a very recent article. 92 flights from Israeli base reveal arms exports to Azerbaijan. These are again in the multiple billions of dollars worth of arms. Haaretz investigation reveals dozens of cargo flights from Baku, which is uh, the major city in Azerbaijan that supplies most of its oil and most of the oil that uh, Israel imports. From Baku to Israeli airstrip used for export of explosives. Israel sells Azerbaijan weaponry worth billions and per sources receives oil and access to Iran. Tensions between Azerbaijan and both Iran and Armenia have ratcheted up recently. That is all due to Azerbaijan's cooperation with Israel and aggression against both the Armenian people and the Iranian people. It's very important to uh, look at maps to analyze exactly what's going on. Azerbaijan is divided into two regions. This region here with Baku uh, draws a lot of oil from the Caspian Sea and uh, Israel receives 40% of its oil imports from Azerbaijan. In exchange, it supplies Azerbaijan with billions upon billions of dollars in weapons that no one else will supply, which Azerbaijan uses to ethnically cleanse Armenians from this region of Nagorno-Karabakh, where they have lived for a very long time. Azerbaijan also has another region known as Nakhchivan here, which is um, southwest of Armenia. And Armenia extends down into what the Azeris refer to as the Zangazur Corridor. The Azeris not only want to take Nagorno-Karabakh and ethnically cleanse it of Armenians, they want to also seize the Zangazur Corridor, expel the Armenians and ethnically cleanse that area. Ultimately, their goal is to ethnically cleanse all of Armenia. They refer to Armenia as Western Azerbaijan, and they want to unite in a pan-Turkic empire with Turkey and extend that empire all the way over to the Xinjiang region in China where the uh, Muslim Uyghurs live who are also considered a Turkic people. Iran had a very long-standing Turkic empire, which at one time uh, controlled all of this Caucasus, Caucasus region, including Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Georgia. The Iranians consider the Azeris to be those uh, Turkish Iranians. And they consider Azerbaijan itself to be Iranian territory. And they are um, setting up to uh, conquer this Nakhchivan region should uh, the Azerbaijanis take over Nagorno-Karabakh and move on the Zangazur corridor, which would isolate Armenia from Iran. Iran opposes Azerbaijan's aggression against uh, the Armenians of Nagorno-Karabakh and Armenians in general. And they oppose it for many reasons, including the fact that they realize that that aggression is being largely instigated by the Israelis who have an ancient hatred of the Armenian people, refer to Armenians as Amalekites and Tim Hay, meaning a people which must be completely and utterly exterminated and blotted out from the memory of human history. Uh, the, these are provinces within Iran, 
And those provinces include East Azerbaijan, which is not part of the nation of Azerbaijan, but it is part of Iran, and West Azerbaijan. Again, the Iranians consider Azerbaijanis to be part of a Turkic Iranian people and to not be members of this pan-Turkic uh, dream that the Turks and the Azerbaijanis share of creating a pan-Turkic corridor all the way across through Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, etc., all the way to um, Xinjiang region of China. Uh, the Iranians instead consider that the Azeris are Iranians and they want to t retake this territory which they used to hold until the 1800s when it was surrendered to the Russian Empire after a series of wars and treaties. That Iranian Empire which um, held the Caucasus region was known as the Qajar Iran Empire. The Wikipedia page on Qajar Iran states Qajar Iran was an Iranian state ruled by the Qajar dynasty, which was of Turkic origin. So they view the uh, Azeris as being under the control of um, the Ilham Aliyev regime, which is oppressing these Turkic Iranian people. And they want to free not only the Armenians, but the Azeris themselves from this uh, Israeli-led oppression of the Azeri people. In the Caucasus, the Qajar dynasty permanently lost much territory to the Russian Empire over the course of the 19th century, comprising modern-day eastern Georgia, Dagestan, Azerbaijan, and Armenia. That is this region which was ceded to the Russian Empire uh, in the uh, Treaty of Turkmenche in 1828. And it was uh, part of a series of uh, three major treaties between Iran and the Russian Empire, Qajar Iran. Prior to that, it had been part of the Afsharid Iranian Empire. Afsharid Iran was an Iranian empire established by the Turkoman Afshar tribe in Iran's northeastern province of Khorasan, ruling Iran, Persia. During Nader's reign, Iran reached its greatest extent since the Sasanian Empire. At its height, it controlled modern-day Iran, Armenia, Georgia, Republic of Azerbaijan, parts of the North Caucasus, Dagestan, Afghanistan, Bahrain, Turkmenistan, etc. This is the region in which this war is uh, about to break out. This is Azerbaijan, this is uh, Nakhchivan, Azerbaijan, and this is Armenia, and here is the Zangazur Corridor, which if the Azeris succeed in taking it, would completely isolate Armenia from its trading partner, Iran, all for the benefit of Israel and to the detriment of all the people in the region and to the detriment of the world. The Treaty of Turkmenche um, ceded that territory from the Qajar Iranian Empire to the Russian Empire, which uh, the Russians maintained control of it all the way through the uh, Bolshevik Soviet Union. The Treaty of Turkmenche was an agreement between Qajar Iran and the Russian Empire, which concluded the Russo-Persian War 1826 to 1828. It was the second in a series of treaties. The first was made. The first was the 1813 Treaty of Golestan, and the last, the 1881 Treaty of Ak Akal. 
signed by Qajar, Iran, and Imperial Russia that forced Persia to cede or recognize Russian influence over the territories that formerly were part of Iran. Following this treaty, as well as the Treaty of Gulistan, Russia had finished conquering all the Caucasus territories from Qajar, Iran, what is now Dagestan, Eastern Georgia, Azerbaijan, and Armenia, all of which formed part of its very concept for centuries. Following the two treaties, the formerly Iranian territories came under the Russian <clears throat> and later the Soviet control for approximately 180 years. This is that region of Nakhchivan, which would be most vulnerable to an Iranian uh, attack, most especially if Armenia joined in. Um, Baku is also highly vulnerable to Iran, both through land routes and through the Caspian Sea. The uh, great risk is that the conflict would draw in Turkey, which is a NATO member, um, and that could get into a very bloody conflict between Turkey and Iran. Of course, Israel would launch attacks against Iran and try to draw in the United States. Iran would try to draw in Russia and China. So this uh, is a very dangerous situation. The Azeris are aggravating it at the behest of Israel. Uh, Aliyev and Netanyahu are allies. Aliyev is Netanyahu's puppet who is committing uh, ethnic cleansing of the Armenians. The uh, Israelis not only want to ethnically cleanse the Armenians from the face of the earth, they threaten to launch nuclear weapons on Tehran and obliterate the Iranian people. This is also of tremendous interest to uh, India. India plans an international north-south transport corridor, which would involves Iran and Azerbaijan. They want this trade route to run all the way through here. India is in competition with China. Uh, India has foolishly submitted itself to BRICS and the idea that the Chinese yuan will become the currency. Uh, China will then have tremendous leverage over India. It will be able to sanction India. It will be able to control India's money supply and trade. Uh, India is more strongly aligned with Russia than it is with China, but uh, the Russians are uh, still the Soviet Union, which is in an alliance with communist China. So there's tremendous pressure on India to bow to China. China wants to take over this territory of India so that it has access to the Bay of Bengal. India is surrounded on its immediate borders by Pakistan, which is a strong ally of China, and by Bangladesh, which, used, which began as East Pakistan. The Chinese have a strong relationship with Bangladesh and an even stronger relationship with Pakistan and are generating economic incentives for both East and West Pakistan to unite against India and join with China in crushing India. So India is very foolish to uh, align with Russia and with China and against the West. But again, that will involve this potential conflict between Iran and Azerbaijan. If that kicks off, that ends, China, uh, ends India's dreams of a north-south transport corridor. The Chinese want to subvert that north-south international corridor because they have their own uh, ambitions to create uh, trade routes which will give them global dominance and subvert 
all of the interests of the United States and the West and enable uh, the communist Chinese to take over the world. Again, Israel is working very closely with the Chinese to accomplish this. Israel will become a major hub of the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative. Uh, China will become Israel's force to create a Marxist global government, which will be run out of Jerusalem, according to Chinese, uh, according to uh, Jewish prophecies iterated in the book of Isaiah, chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. Um, China wants to create, again, a route straight through what is today India, but they hope will become uh, Chinese territory into the um, Bay of Bengal, and then they will have access to this. They will also have routes through here, uh, control all this trade. They're making heavy moves in Africa and South America. They are working with the Israelis to destroy the US dollar and all of Western Europe. They are working with Russia to expand the Soviet Union across uh, Western Europe that is failing, so they are now uh, setting Russia up to destroy itself so that China can seize uh, Siberia, seize all of its resources. There will be, there is tremendous um, competition between India and China for these resources. Uh, China is very wisely securing all of its access and interests in resources in uh, Siberia and Africa and South America. China also has a habit of setting up outposts. They were heavily involved in Albania and Yugoslavia, subverting uh, Russian Soviet interests in favor of Maoist interests. They were also involved in Africa and South America in the same way to create these outposts that they then want to uh, draw channels to and then gain all the territories in between. There is a large Muslim presence in Malaysia and Indonesia. They have to resolve this conflict between Shia in uh, Iran and Syria and Lebanon and the Sunni of Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, Bangladesh, uh, Indonesia and Malaysia so that there is not these internal conflicts which will obstruct their Belt and Road initiative. Israel is helping them in that process. Donald Trump and Jared Kushner are very close to Saudi Arabia. Uh, Saudi Arabia is subverting the West and U.S. interests in favor of Russia and China at the behest of the Israelis. So we have to wonder why Donald Trump and Jared Kushner are so friendly with the Saudis who are subverting American interests. The Chinese have brokered a peace between Saudi Arabia and Iran, the Shia of Iran and the Sunni of Saudi Arabia. The uh, Chinese want to bite off this chunk of India so that they can gain access to the Bay of Bengal as part of their uh, Belt and Road Initiative and as part of surrounding India between Bangladesh and Pakistan with uh, these hostile forces to eliminate their Indian competition and oppress the Chinese people. Um, I mean, the Indian people, the Chinese have greatly oppressed the Africans where they have gained control. They treat the Africans as slaves. The Chinese also have an economic corridor going through Pakistan. So uh, all of these are not only uh, trade wars, they are wars for global dominance and Israel is setting China up to become the international power over the entire earth. Uh, Israel always intended to betray the United States and the West to uh, international communism. It was largely founded 
by Zionist Bolsheviks out of Russia. It created, uh, its ancestors created Bolshevik Russia, created communist China. Mao Zedong was always led uh, by Jewish people to create communist China, and Israel has been very duplicitous and treacherous towards the United States. Um, Israel is sponsoring the genocide of Christian Armenians, despite the fact that Christian Zionists in America are the largest supporters of Israel in the world. I am the author of several books, which you can find at my website, cjbbooks.com. Uh, beneath each book title, there is a contribution link. I would greatly appreciate your contributions. I can't produce these videos without them, and I can't even continue to write my books without your help. There will also be a contribution link in the description below. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.